morning. You may be seated. What a beautiful day to celebrate the class of 2020 and the class of 2021. Let's give them a round of applause. This is a special day as we celebrate the academic accomplishments of our graduates. For many of you, this will be one of the most monumental moments in your life. And we are so privileged to be able to celebrate it with you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, staff, and administration of Warner University, I offer you heartfelt congratulations. Regardless of your field of study, you have one thing in common. You have been a student at Warner University. Today, you will be added to a list of more than 10,000 alumni. I'd like to recognize a special group of individuals who have played a huge part in your academic journey. They've made great personal sacrifice to support you. I'd like to ask the parents, the grandparents, siblings, spouses, and other family members, please stand. Graduates, please give them a round of applause for their sacrifice. Thank you. Another group that I would like to recognize today, the faculty. The faculty are the heart and soul of Warner University. Each of them has an incredible passion for their students and for their mission of this school. I'd like to ask the faculty to stand and let's celebrate and applaud them for their great work. Thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't also recognize my leadership team, the staff, the facilities team, the custodians, to weather the coronavirus this year. Let's thank them. When I think of this class, I think of resilience. I can't believe what they have gone through the last four years. When they arrived in 2017, just a few days later, Hurricane Irma came. Does anybody remember that? In 2018 in our state, we experienced the shooting at Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. And many of our students are from Southern Florida and they had friends and families that were touched. On October the 8th, In 2019, 200 yards from here, we lost one of our own, Theo Hammonds. And then in 2020, the coronavirus, racial unrest. But you know, events like this develop your character. With God in your life, you can overcome any challenge. We ask for God's blessing on you as you start this new chapter in your life. Today is your day. You have earned it. Let the celebrations begin. Good morning. My name is Laura Modis, and I am chairman of the board here at Warner University. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations. We are very proud of your hard work, your perseverance in these unprecedented times. And you are finally here today, even though you are among hundreds and thousands and millions of students graduating in Florida, across the nation, and the world, your journey was different because you were at Warner University. Together, we, nav we navigated a pandemic that changed your normal way of living. 
Your strength and faith carried you through this past year, and you never gave up on your goals and your future. We all know that this has not been easy. You have made history, and these are years that you will always remember. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, if you will, please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of this day, this life, and this world you have created. God, we acknowledge your splendor and your glory and bow down to you before in humble admiration. Today we give you thanks for the faculty, staff, leadership team, Dr. Hogue, and the entire Warner family who have served sacrificially through untold hours of preparation and prayer. They have embraced these graduates preparing to give of themselves in service to the realms of business, the academic world, the arts, education, government, social action, and ministry. Thank you, God, for your generous provision, including the grace by which you have saved us and sustained us every day. We lift these graduates and their families to you as they celebrate this special milestone, as they deliberate over life-changing decisions about jobs, careers, homes, marriages, and family. May they seek and find your guidance. May they constantly seek your daily help to faithfully live out their chosen callings. May the skills they have developed managing their time, setting priorities, and keeping focus during exams be the foundation on which they build successful careers and lives as they journey through life. Fill our graduates with gratitude, humility, love, and faith. Teach them how to pray. Give them spiritual wisdom and discernment. Our greatest prayer today is that they continue to be lifelong learners who recognize the need to constantly discover more about you, the source of all knowledge and truth. As we pray our graduates' future into your hands, we are aware that you are placing the future of your world and your kingdom into their hands. Thank you for bringing all of us here to this wonderful day. I ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture this morning comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, and it reads, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are, God, you are the people of God. You did not have received mercy but now you have received mercy. Amen. Thank you, Rodney. It's my privilege to introduce our commencement speaker, Bishop Timothy J. Clark. He serves as senior pastor at First Church of God in Columbus, where he has ministered since 1982. Few ministers have this length of longevity. In the Church of God movement, First Church is one of the largest and most influential churches in America, and it's the largest African American church in our movement. If you search Google News, you will see him quoted in the Washington Post, Columbus Dispatch, and other national news sources. I've gotten to know Bishop Clark in his current capacity as chairman of the General Assembly and chairman of the Ministries Council, which represents the governing bodies of the boards of the Church of God International Assembly. This week, as the George Floyd verdict was being announced, a 16-year-old African-American girl, Micaiah Bryant, was shot in Columbus, Ohio, not too far from where the Bishop's Church is, and not too far from my wife's hometown. My friend Bishop Clark was on the front line in Ohio, bringing people together, dealing with the loss and time of unrest. He 
continues to work with his local community, and he's trusted by leaders to keep calm and peace during these very uncertain times. Bishop Clark holds a Bachelor of Theology degree from Graduate Theological Foundation, a Master of Ministry from Southern California School of Ministry, a Certificate of Theology and Ministry from Princeton Theological Seminary, and multiple honorary doctorates. He's married to Lady C and is a loving father and grandfather. Warner community, please join me in giving Bishop Clark a warm Warner introduction. Would you bow your heads in a word of prayer with me? How grateful and how thankful we are to you this beautiful morning, sun-kissed, warm. It is reflective of what we feel in our hearts, even as we gather beneath the canopy of your sky. We thank you for this occasion. We thank you for the leadership of this great university. We thank you for these students and for their families. We pray that today will be a day when they sense your grace, the gifts you've given them, and the charge to go forth as they labor, work, and witness in the world the days that lie ahead. We give thanks to you for it. In the wonderfully sweet but still very strong name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Well, good morning. Let me try it again. Good morning. That's better. That's better. I certainly give honor to God who is head of the church and the Lord of my life. Grateful to be here. Grateful to be at Warner. Grateful to be in Florida. I woke up the other morning in Columbus and we had snow on the ground. I am grateful to be in Florida. And I'm thankful for my dear and abiding friend and brother, your president, Dr. David Hogue, to Mrs. Hogue, and to all of the faculty and the staff, the student body and the graduates and your family. It's good to be with you today. Our president has done a marvelous job of setting, as it were, the atmosphere that is in our nation, even as we gather here in this beautiful courtyard here on the campus of Warner. I've been thinking what I would share with you today, what I would say to you today. I've done many commencements, and I've looked out, as I do now, into the faces, the eyes of those of you who are about to graduate. Here is what I know. If you have not prayed since your last test, you are praying now. And this is your prayer. God, let him be brief. <laughs> I am going to seek to be the answer to your prayer. But I do want to lift before you something that I want you to look at. And I want to leave it with you as a deposit as you go forth into the living of your lives in the days that lie ahead. Luke chapter 22, when you get home, I'll give you one last homework assignment before you turn your test. You thought homework was over. This is your final homework assignment. Sometime today, before you go to bed, after the parties, after the revelry, after the lunch and the dinner, and after the photo bombing and the picture taking, I want you to sit down somewhere and I want you to read Luke chapter 22. It's part of the last days of our Lord and he says to his disciples some very strange words. He says to them, if you do not have a sword, go buy one. And one of the disciples says to him, we have two. And our Lord says, that is enough. Let us go. What strange words from the carpenter 
of Nazareth, the Prince of Peace. If you do not have one, go buy a sword. Here are two, a disciple says, and Jesus says, that is enough. Let us go. Here's what I want to, I don't want to talk about buying swords. I want to take that and I want to raise this question. What will you need to make it? That's what I want to lift for you today. In the next 12 minutes, the president told me that I had 15 minutes to speak to you. I thought to myself, he knows I'm a black preacher. It takes a black preacher 15 minutes to clear his throat. <laughs> but I am a man under authority, so I will stick to 15 minutes. What will you need to make it? Our Lord says, as he's preparing to go to Gethsemane and later to Calvary, he says to his disciples, if you do not have one, go buy a sword. What do you need to make it? Jesus knew that after his departure, life for the disciples would change forever. And what they had had up until then would not be sufficient for where they were going. Life changes. I stood with your teachers as you walked through us today. I looked at you. I looked in your faces. I looked in your eyes. I looked at your stride. I smiled and I thought to myself, what a nice life they've had. Here in the safety of this campus, here among loving and affirming teachers, your parents, your spouses, your families, and some of you today will prepare to go do graduate work. Others of you will prepare to take jobs. Others of you will go on in your already selected career. But here is what you need to know. After today, once you turn your tassel, what has brought you here is not what you will need to go from here. What will you need to make it? Let me suggest three tools you will need. First, you will need character. What a word that is. What a word. Our president said it. What you've been through, the loss of classmates, the horrors of this COVID pandemic, what you've been through with nature's volatility. All of that has shaped your character. That word character, I know you've studied this, comes from the world of print. It is to make a mark. It is to imprint, emboss. It is to do something that is so indelible that life and time does not erase it. You will need character. The world in which we live, our nation, so divided politically, socioeconomically, even religiously. The evangelicals versus the progressives, the moderates versus the liberals, our churches, our community, our country, so divided, so splintered. You will need character on your jobs, in the living of your life, in the discharge of your duties, in your relationships with others, what will ground you, what will settle you, what will help you is that you become men and women of character. You will need that to make it. You have the education. You have now what my grandma called book learning. But now you will need character. Here's the second. Not only will you need character, you will need convictions. Now let me quickly say, let me quickly say, convictions are not opinions. Opinions change. Convictions seldom do. Let me ask you this morning. 
Do you have any convictions? Is there anything that you are sold out to? Is there anything you are sure of? Is there anything you would give your life for? Is there anything that you believe with all of your heart and nothing can sway you or move you? Dr. King once said, until a person finds something for which they are willing to die, they are not fit to live. It is about conviction. I said to the president last night, after we dined sumptuously at Harborside, you must go there. Let me say this, and when you go, order the lobster bites and the onion rings. You will thank me later. I said to the president on our way back, part of what causes me angst in these days is that we are bombarded with a plethora of noise, so-called news, morning, noon, and night. It's all we hear. We seldom have time to think or to even form our own convictions. I beg of you today, if you're going to make it, Jesus said to his disciples, if you have money, go buy a sword. You're going to need something else to make it. You're going to need, you've lived here now these years, four years, five years. I don't think any of you have been here six years, four years, five years. And now you go out into the world. What will you need to make it? Character. You will need convictions. And lastly, you will need courage. That is what our world desperately needs this morning. Men and women like you of character of conviction and of courage, who find something for which to stand, and they stand there irrespective of what the cost is. The world will change today if you cultivate character, convictions, and courage, that when you see wrong, to try to right it. When you see evil, to speak up against it. When you see injustice, to strike a blow for justice. And when you see hurt, to try to heal it. And where there is hatred, push back the darkness of hatred with the light of love. June 1968, long before some of your parents were born, much less you. June 1968, in the nave of St. Patrick's Cathedral on Fifth Avenue, New York City, the city of my nativity, Senator Edward Moore Kennedy, the youngest of the Kennedy brothers, stood over the bier of his fallen brother, Senator Robert Francis Kennedy and paid tribute. And this is what Ted Kennedy said. My brother need not be made in death more than what he was in life. He simply needs to be remembered as a man who saw war and tried to stop it, who saw poverty and tried to erase it, who saw darkness and tried to bring light. And then he closed with these words. Some see things as they are and merely ask why. I dream things that never were and ask why not. I want you to be among those who dream America, who dream a nation, who dream a world, who dream a church, who dream a community that has never been, and ask why not. No vision and you perish, no ideal and you are lost. Your heart must ever cling to some hope at any cost, some hope, some dream to cling to, some rainbow in the sky, 
some melody to sing to, some service that is high. That, my friends, is what you will need to make it. God bless you. Bishop Clark, thank you for being here this morning and thank you for that timely, good message. Are you all ready to get down to business? Thought so. Mr. President, it is a pleasure to present those students who have met the requirements for graduation in this April 2021 commencement ceremony. This morning we have candidates for the Master of Arts in Education, the Master of Business Administration, Master of Science and Management, the Master of Ministry, the Bachelor of Arts, the Bachelor of Science, the Associate of Arts, and the Associate of Science. Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in Education, the Master of Business Administration, the Master of Science and Management, and the Master of Ministry degree please stand? These candidates have completed a curriculum of study at a level of complexity and specialization that extended their knowledge and intellectual maturity beyond their baccalaureate degrees. You may be seated. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Science degrees please stand? These candidates have completed an academic program made up of general studies, greater depth of curriculum in one academic field, and the integration of various disciplines and perspectives into a Christian worldview. You may be seated. Will the candidates for the Associate of Arts and the Associate of Science degrees please stand? These candidates have completed a program of general studies to develop the academic disciplines biblical study skills and theological insight, and understanding and appreciation of our world, our culture, and each other. You may be seated. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty, I'm pleased to present to you the candidates for the Master of Arts in Education, the Master of Business Administration, the Master of Science and Management, the Master of Ministry, the Bachelor of Arts, the Bachelor of Science, the Associate of Arts, and the Associate of Science. By the authority vested in me by the State of Florida, the Board of Trustees of Warner University, and upon recommendation from the Academic Dean and the Faculty, I hereby confer upon you the degree that you have earned as recorded by the Registrar and is listed in our program with all of the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Now I think there's something all of you graduates have been wanting to do for a while. Before we do that though, two or three housekeeping notes because of COVID, our graduates and our president will be fist bumping this year instead of shaking hands. You'll always remember 2020 and 2021, won't you? I also want to draw everyone's attention to the back in front of the Regal Center. We have two uh, photo backgrounds for parents and families and the students after the ceremony. Please feel free to use those. They're there for you. That does not mean we are not welcoming parents and family members from coming up and uh, taking pictures as, as your students walk across the stage, but we did want to point those out to you. And also, graduates, feel free to remove your face coverings as you walk across the stage, uh, if you would just remember to put them back on when you leave. Attendants, please lead the graduates to the platform for individual recognition. Dr. Lori Hutto, and I will read the names of the graduates 
from the Education Department, which houses the Master of Arts in Education curriculum and instruction programs specializing in elementary education and science, technology, engineering, and math. Kristen Arts. Jordan Michael Barker with distinction. Katherine Bush with distinction. Nashira Solange Shacomb with distinction. Tamisha Janelle Ellis. Brandy Hanrahan with distinction. Kazmine Holton. Shelly Ann Walsh. Andromine Sophia Gabriella Samero. Good morning, I'm Timothy Dwyer. I'm chairman of the ministry department, which houses the master of ministry degree uh, and undergraduate degrees in biblical studies, interdisciplinary ministry, and Christian ministries. With the master of ministry, Pearly Cummings. James Kaiser. Ariel Hero. Geraldine Pompey. Robert Shannon. Zulaika Viscarando. My name is Dr. Lynn Johnson, and I will now read the names of the graduates from the Masters of Business Administration and Masters of Science in Management degrees. Emily Bass. Christopher Beck. Jude Clark. Tandra Davis with distinction. 
distinction. Leonard Faison. Tracy Forges. Manuel Haig. Marlo Holman. Kristen Isabel with distinction. Jason Canoza. Edgar Lopez. Eric Lovett. Destiny Lowe with distinction. Luis Eduardo Lutosa. <laughs> Vanessa Ravello. Steven Ripka with distinction. Tremaine Sly. Rachel Smith. Heather Stevenson. Virginia Stroud. Our very own Rodney Dallas. Casey Sulia with distinction and our very own. Amanda Lee Kirkendall with distinction. Aisha Livingston. Samantha Weathersby with distinction. My name is Justin Sharpless, and I will now read the names of the graduates of the Agricultural Studies Department, which houses the degrees of the Agri Bachelor of Arts in Agricultural Studies. Wyatt Broxson. Kara Elizabeth Clark, cum laude. Jacob Driscoll. Michael Ford. Trace A. Foreman. Hunter L. Gibson. Caitlin Heisler. Erin Elizabeth Jenkins. Carson Noah Jones. Molly Ann Jones. 
Jacob T. Ross. Trevor Gordon Thomas. Casey Wingate, magna cum laude. Abigail, Abigail Joy Young, cum laude. My name is Daniel Julik, and I will now read the names of the graduates from the Social Science and General Studies departments, which house the Criminal Justice, General Studies, History, Psychology, and Social Work degrees. Sydney Coral Ackerman. Kaylee Brene Andrews. Alyssa Augustine. Christina A. Bullard. Kaylin Butine. Carvalho. Erica Cole. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Cooper Stewart. Casey Lee Dugan. Catherine Indicott. Taylor Ann Gustafson. Jamisha Hamilton. <laughs> Donald Brett Hermelbrock. Kiana Hernandez. John Karshner. Jessica Marie Osborne. Tarnisha Alma Robinson. Rafael Rodriguez. Alana A. St. Clair. Shaquita Shanae Thomas. Chase Everett Alfson. Joshua Brown. Bradley D. Meadows. Dakota Lise Marie Naples.
name is Sharon Beck, and I will now read the names of the graduates from the commu Communication Arts Department, which houses the Communication, Sport Communication, and English Writing degree. DeAndre Cranston. Wilson Lorenzo, Jr. I'm back again, Dr. Lynn Johnson, and I will now read the names of the graduates from the Business Administration Department, which houses the bachelor's degrees of business. Augusto Silva. Landon Bell. Gabriel Bonilla. Douglas Chacon. Stephen Chapman Cum Laude. Matthew Coleman. Jacob Cooper, also known as Coop the Scoop. <laughs> Nicholas Diaz. Miss Antoinette Falk Cum Laude. Marche Golden. Tyler Renee Gonzalez. Jonathan Governor. Maverick. Griffin. <laughs> Noah Michael Hazelton. Katina Hover. Tyrese James. Isabella Jeremillo. Angelica Jimenez, cum laude. Taylor Renee Massey. Moses Mertillus. Gervonta John Terrius Shamar Morris. Danielle Pequin Magnum Cum Laude. Alexis Paul Dennis. Alicia Randall. Anthony A.J. Robinson. Andrea Silva. Sammy Snipes, Sr. David Torres. Samara Tubbs. Nicholas Vidal. Daryl Weaver. 
Jalen Williams. Jennifer Williams. Caleb Wilson. Kyrie Wright. Tori Young.
Shayla Patrice Thompson. Alexis Megan Timms. Consuelo Vasquez, cum laude. Rebecca Walk, magna cum laude. is Trevor Hall and I will now read the names of the graduates from the exercise and sports studies department which houses the exercise science, sport management, and exercise and sport leadership degrees. John Eric Bean III. Peter Carciopolo. Shanice Aaliyah Cook. Cameron M. Cooper. Alani Marie Cora. Avery Madison Cottrell. Rachel Lynn DeWeer. Daniel Estrell. Willie Lewis Floyd. Alexander Gray. Messiah K. Griffin. Tamara Hansen. Quintarius Hill. Travon Reginald Jackson. Deasia James. Sandro Joseph. Xavier Marshall. Jan Michael Martinez Colon. Matthew Sean McClure. Lamacky McMahon. Joshua Pinkney, cum laude. Tatiana Lexi Rodriguez. Antonio Santos, magna cum laude. Sabrina Alexis Scott, magna cum laude. Timothy Shainer, magna cum laude. Matthew Simmons. Cody Smith. Thaddeus John Stokowski. Jacob Michael Upchurch. Dion 
Sean Zachary White. And I'm Timothy Dwyer again with the undergraduate ministry department. Leon Anderson. Leah Hagen, Hagen, magna cum laude. Christopher Jarnigan, cum laude. Isaiah Leitze, magna cum laude. Zion Redmond. Courtney Tate. Ruthie Williams, magna cum laude. Joel Zyla. Good morning, my name is Kelly Grogan and I will now read the names of the graduates from the Department of Natural Sciences, which houses the Bachelor of Science in Biology degree. Aurora Marie Alderman. Zachary Baylog, summa cum laude. Brooke Blommel. Dietis Charles. James Cherry. <laughs> Diana Davis. Dr. Gentry Sutton, and I will read the names of those graduating with the Associate of Arts or the Associate of Science. Marissa Adame. Zakia Leticia Bacon. Rebecca Bentz. Grace Bergeron. Zaire Campbell. Jerrica Cochran. Sierra Coney. Vitor Di Figueredo Wagner. Hey. Nicole. Alexis Dewberry. Briera Foster. Devin Frost. Alexis Hankerson. To 
Ron Johnson. Tracy Gardner. Megan Gooden. David Hafner. Gina Remy Marie Martin. Debbie Martin. Tammy Rollerson McHugh. Bailey Nichelle Parika. Corey Terrell Rowe Jr. Philip Stegman. Santiago Tovar. Keaton Williams. Let's give all the graduates another round of applause. Good job, graduates. At this time, I would like to offer some special recognition to some special people. There are two students who deserve special recognition today. It's no easy thing to earn a college degree. As Dr. Hope pointed out, these students have earned their degrees under unusual and unprecedented challenges. Two of these students, however, have maintained a perfect 4.0 grade point average throughout their bachelor's level work. Now, that means at Warner University, our undergraduate system has a plus minus course rating. So that means these students didn't have any A minuses, all straight A's, and this is cumulative. So this includes transfer work, any college work they did in high school, not just at Warner, all straight A's. Bruno, Carvalho, and Alana Robillard, would you stand? Where's Bruno and Alana? Bruno, stay standing, please. Is Alana here? Okay. Bruno, on behalf of the president, faculty, staff, and trustees, I want to say thank you for the seriousness with which you have approached the academic enterprise. You have inspired your professors and modeled excellence for all those around you. Warner is better for your being here, and we hope your commitment to excellence and to the life of the mind translates into significant positive influence as you leave here to impact your culture and society. And after the ceremony, please find me back by the photo backdrops because I have a special gift for you. Good job, Bruno. And now I want to recognize Warner University's 2021 Professor of the Year. The Professor of the Year is chosen by traditional undergraduate students based on three overarching criteria. Scholarly approach to teaching, impact on students, and service orientation to the community, church, and profession. Students have said the following about this year's Professor of the Year. She is the type to always want the best for her students in every way possible. She will break down any situation in a way her students will understand. Another comment is that she, quote, makes every class feel like an elective that you look forward to attending. Now that's high praise. 
One student writes that this teacher's uh, teaching style is honest, open, and transparent. The same student writes of this professor as a general, and the students in her classes as soldiers. And this student says, the soldiers at Warner University are in great hands with this general. I have observed countless times when she has gone beyond her duties as a professor to find solutions when soldiers wanted to go back home because of the obstacles of life. And I really love this comment. Y'all found a professor that is welcoming yet stern, informative yet flexible, serious yet understanding. I am not exactly sure how y'all found her, but do not take her for granted. Well, I assure you that we do not take her for granted. And I am pleased to announce that the winner of this year's Professor of the Year and only her second year of full-time teaching at Warner is Dr. Kimberly Barta Savage, Associate Professor of Criminal Justice. Dr. Barta Savage, will you please come up? Dr. Barta Savage, thank you for being excellent. All right. Warner graduates, I'm going to ask you to stand right now and remain standing through our benediction in just a moment. But before our benediction, we have one more important item of business. We are honored today to acknowledge your accomplishments, and we are proud of you. It is our hope that each of you will take what you've learned here at Warner and use it to your highest calling. Please move your tassels to the left to signify your new status as graduates of Warner University. All right, will you pray with me? Our Father, we've heard from this platform today a reminder that we need to be the men and women of character that this world needs, that we need to live out of conviction and courage. May the class of 2020 and 2021 do that in ways that we could never, ever imagine. Bless them, bless their families, bless this day, and bless their future. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.